All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, All everyone. Right. Good morning, everyone. Oh, wait, I should turn that down, huh? <laughs> so we don't have a reverberation echo. Good morning, everyone. Okay, great. Hi, guys. My name is Sarah James from Jesse James Beads, and I have the pleasure of being here to start our Friday morning with the amazing geometric bead artist, Onye Medica. Onye is here with us. She is an incredible jewelry artist. You may have met her at Bead and Button or along the way here on the internet. Her method of creating these amazing geometric bead artistries is bead weaving. Onye is a true artist and one of our summer camp counselors this year. Onye, welcome. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate you. Onye and I met at Bead and Button. Oh, wow. This must be like maybe five years ago. I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, five. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah. Um, and she created these amazing little bead geometric wonders, like seed beads twisted up, weaved together to create these little tiny bead gems. And she comes to my booth and she hands one to me and says, here, this is for you. That moment, Onye, inspired me. Just your generosity and the pure artistry that was in this teeny tiny little bead that you created. It's it's, it's made me want to seek you out and here you are with us today. Thank you so much for having me here. Yeah, I really just, when I was traveling to Bead and Button, um, those were never easy times, but I try to have numerous gratitude practices going on in my life and generosity of spirit is important to me. And what helped me connect with other bead weavers when I was attending Bead and Button, even when I wasn't a teacher and I only taught one year, um, was carrying a case of my beaded bead to, to give away. And I, I, won't, I won't tell an untruth. I do have my favorites. I have my, my friends and close connections that I kept uh, over the years, people bead people that I've met on Facebook. And so there was always intention of seeking out people to be able to hand off this gift. It's like, I don't, I don't know what I can give you, but let me give you something to remember me by, remember this occasion. And I know we missed the bead and button because it was such a haven for bead weavers, bead teachers, bead merchants. Um, and just a sense of community, which is absolutely still present, but we've just had to be creative in maintaining it, so. Yeah, that's one thing that we all really missed this past year was not having bead shows and bead and button, I think, is is gone for good, which is really a, a sad moment for, for the bead industry. But we are very blessed in that we're able to connect with each other online and share our spirit and our creativity. And that's one of the reasons why Jesse James created summer camp last year was like, we gotta do something to keep ourselves together and to keep learning and keep inspiring. And you know, that's how, that's how, that's how that idea was born. Excellent, yeah. So Onye, Onye is coming on as a summer camp counselor for Jesse James Beads this summer. We are so excited to have you here. I actually have your samples of Excellent. the project that we're going to be making. Mm -hmm. So I had only seen this project flat on the screen and I received these yesterday. Our team sent them to me in Colorado. They're like springy. Mm -hmm. This like crazy cool spiral bead connector component is what we're going to be making. So Onye, tell us a little bit about you and your method for creating these beads. And there's a lot of geometry and math involved and you create your own patterns, right? I do, it wasn't always my practice. I'm still very much a beginner at that, you know, trying to creep up into novice territory, but everything I make is geometrically inspired. I'm an ex-chemist, so the geometry of atoms and molecules and chemicals um, is inspiring for me. Um, I follow a lot of wonderful geometric bead weavers. Um, I do keep an eye on what the CGB community does, but my fixation is triangle weave. 
and being able to build these structures that are independently self-supporting. Um, I created, I started creating beaded beads probably in 2008 or 2009. That's when I first encountered um, Bead Infinitum and Gwen Fisher and Cindy Holtzclaw and Florence Turner's work, uh, as well as uh, Valerie Hector's work and Suzanne Golden's work. So all bead weavers that I greatly admire. Um, and with beaded beads, the normal method of creating them is to bead around a core bead. But because of the method of my engineering, I would almost have a, a shape finished and then I would have to hunt down a core bead that fit and there was no algorithm, there was no pattern or published established standard of doing that. So I finally got exasperated and said, I'm gonna make these stand up for themselves. I'm gonna make them so that I don't need a core bead. And that's how my method of creating beaded beads came to be. That's really, it's really spectacular, especially because Jesse James beads, the majority of beads of, of I think anyhow, the majority of designs that come out from um, our like larger glitzier beads is typically stringing. But right. there is like, once you learn how to make a certain sort of design, like once you get your feet wet with jewelry making, you're always like, Ooh, well, what about like that really beautiful peyote stitch or like, how do I twist this wire up? How do I weave some beads? So it's really interesting to hear your method and how, you know, your designs have come to be to, to stand up on their own and also to be able to teach people that are, are completely green with yeah. bead weaving, how to take a monofilament and beads and put them into a shape that is completely structurally sound. I yeah. love, I love these so much. This is really, really cool. Oh, yay. I think they're a lot of fun. Um, the monofilament method came about because in our post 9-11 society, right. you stopped for a time, you couldn't travel with bead needles or tools. Okay. So um, I was making a lot of trips to Maryland because I live in Indiana, but my, my mom lives in Maryland. Um, and my best friend. And I, of course, everywhere I want to go and anywhere I want to go, I, you know, travel to weddings, travel to other places. I want to take beads with me. I want to be able to work on the plane, whether it's a 40 minute flight or a four hour flight. Sure. So I started designing in a way that didn't require me to use needles. And then of course I discovered micro beads. So size, 16, 18, 20, 22. And you can only make so many passes through a micro bead. Sure. But I, from some trial and error, I was able to figure out that monofilament will work. And the, um, the micro beads are always an embellishment step. They're never part of the inner structure. Okay. So I can make that one or that second pass with six pound test in a micro bead if it's a 20 or an 18. Okay, so you're talking about micro beads. You're talking about using them as embellishments. Do you have any samples that you can hold up and show your, some of your Let's work? Let's see, I do, and I hope you can see it adequately. So this tree is all 11s and 12s. The Thank embellishment, let's see, the embellishment on the bottom has micros. It's it's not easy to distinguish them, but you can see in the flow of the edging that those are very, very, very tiny beads. Wow. That is like, it's crazy. It looks like, I mean, it, it literally looks like a piece of sacred geometry found in nature that just repeats upon itself. And it's interesting when people get into the discussions of geometry and, and sacred geometry and mathematics. I believe it's something, because it's present in nature, mathematics has existed as long as time has. Time is a mathematical construct. So knowing it was always there to be discovered and it's, and it's just fun to rediscover. It's fun to see the patterns, see the Fibonacci spirals, 
see sure. the chirality of structures. So for me, that's the joy embedded in the art and the science. So it's like these patterns have always been there. And then us as a human society have discovered the patterns and put numbers and mm -hmm. a visual realization to them. And then you have taken these patterns and these numbers and gone one step further and turned them into structural beaded forms. It's amazing. Basically. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I think, yeah, I just, I just enjoy the discovery. I enjoy the exploration, the saying, what if I do this? Or what if I do that? And just seeing what happens. So how did you get started as an artist? I was reading your bio earlier today and you said that art is your life purpose. You were destined to be here. Oh, yes. Tell us about your journey. Um, it's been a circuitous route. It's had many twists and turns. I finished college in 2001 with a chemistry degree. I was really excited about my corporate job. I was really excited about living in a city that I didn't grow up in. Um, I was, I had kind of this preconceived notion of what success looked like. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, life happens and you start to, well, let me backtrack. I've always been a creative, but owning it as one's purpose is a lot different than having it as a hobby or just something you do on the weekends to pass the time. Sure. You know you're an artist when you can't go to sleep without creating something. You know it's embedded in your DNA if you literally lose sleep dreaming up or you know conjuring a new idea. So to truncate the story, I left my corporate job in 2007. I sold my house, I've had other jobs, I've done other things, but art has always been with me. Um, I started in high school making daisy chain necklaces and rings and sold them to my classmates. Um, and being a native of West Africa and Nigeria, um, we always have a hustle. We always have a thing that we're doing that's making us money. We're always, trying to figure out, okay, how does this increase my territory? How does this give me room to expand? What will this do for me? And what will this do for other people when you're in community? So I knew when I was buying those beads as a teenager that the, the habit wasn't gonna support itself. It's either beg my mom for more money to do chores um, and things, menial things I didn't wanna do or sell these beads, make money buy more beads, repeat. So um, that's kind of where that really began, but always carried me through. I did it in college. I took repairs. I made things for street festivals. Um, I started designing with geometry in mind, probably around 2008 or nine. Um, I was blessed to be a part of the Beat Infinitum design team. and. I believe if you go to Gwen's website, beatinfinitum.com, the link is still up. So that was a whole 11 years ago, but those works are still there. And it was, uh, the requirement was just to take a pattern that they had published and create your own version of it or create your own expression oh. of it. But yeah, it's, it's always been there. It's always been with me. Um, I think really designs by Omnier became my thing, my trademark brand, whatever, probably in 2007, where I started putting it on business cards, registering the business name. Um, but yeah, always exploring, always asking more questions, like Alice in Wonderland, you know, tumbling down the rabbit hole. I love your start and, um and this whole journey and designs by Onye. If you've never been onto Onye's Etsy page, designs by Onye, you get ready to have your mind blown because your the work that you do and to see these clear images of your beads and just your artistry. And you can just hearing you speak now and seeing the pictures, 
or being able to hold one of these bead designs, it just makes it all come that much more to life, Onye. Yeah. Um, and I love that you started with Daisy Chain because like I said, we we're introducing Onye here um, because she's amazing. And also because she's one of our Jesse James summer camp counselors this year. Last year, one of our projects was to make a Daisy Chain necklace. So I have to say that we are like really, we're like next leveling, starting with the Daisy Chain last year and then moving up to these really incredible geometric art designs. You know, I have to hold it up again. Yeah. Yeah, and that design is done with triangle weave. And really? it's really one of the simplest forms of the stitch. It's just, it just creates a spiral. It's lovely. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> I know. I'm just like, this is so cool. So I, I put my hair up in one of those like telephone, I use ah. this right now, but I use those telephone cord mm -hmm. uh, hair ties because it doesn't yeah. hurt my hair. I'm like, oh my gosh, this reminds me of this. This could be like a really cool scrunchie if you made it a little bit bigger. And you've given me a couple different sizes. It's just like so darn cool. Yeah, the sizing is uh, dependent upon just the number of curls in the spiral that you make. So that blue and gold one is just a few less than the purple one. I like the purple because it's really rich in curls. <laughs> The, the curls are absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those projects that it doesn't have to be perfect. I know those of us who do geometric and mathematics based things are looking for, you know, hard angles and sheer lines, but this doesn't have to be perfect. This can be, you know, fun and kind of, it's not free form. It does have a structure, but don't, don't, get caught up in perfection when trying to finish it is what I would advise any of my students. And I really love that we're going to get, we are going to have our first stab at right angle weave. Like we're with, at summer camp, we're learning peyote, a peyote stitch ring. There's brick stitch earrings, um, making connector components. And then this is right angle weave. It's such a nice, well-balanced array of, um, of bead weaving. Yeah. And I want to make the distinction between raw and triangle weave because they're both absolutely easy stitches. I think people get caught up in craw and craw, cubic right angle weave and prismatic right angle weave, which are much more three-dimensional. Triangle weave can be three-dimensional, but this expression of the stitch is essentially, it's a two-dimensional stitch creating a three-dimensional object. Um, so I don't want people to be intimidated by, you know, it's, it's not going to be hard. It's going to be easy. And I promise. No, this looks really, really fun. Yeah. So do you have any, do you have any examples laying near you of any other like right angle weave? Like this is such, I feel like this is such a good intro to the stitch. Mm -hmm. What, where, show us like what, what right angle weave can do. Well, that's that's, a, that's a thing. Okay. You, you know I don't do anything simple. I mean that's simple. That's how I bring it on. See it. <laughs> Again, it's it's because of my my bent. It's because of the way I lean. I I love layering. I love embellishment. I love going ape with it. So, and there is a I do probably ninety seven percent of all of my designs in right in triangle weave. And it's not that I don't do right angle weave, but because of the structures I'm trying to build, um, and you'll notice there is a theme here. I have a theme for trees right now. And so that's not going away. So sorry, the sparkle's catching all of the light. Just so much sparkle. <laughs> it's so much sparkle. That is, and that is, Okay. It's, it's so you, triangle weave, but there are several layers in this dome of this tree. So it that is, is, that's the same weave as this? It is. Wow. So I think I need to, <laughs> and I, I don't know if anyone else has done this because I have to just do my research and check, but there's a way that I weave triangles that creates three dimensions. Um, it's so... Triangles are flat. Triangles are two-dimensional. Yes. A tetrahedron is the geometric shape that is four equilateral triangles, looks like a pyramid. Sure. 
So imagine all of these little upward facing joins are those little pyramids, but they're placed side by side by side by side by side and they make structure. So you saw that in my, the beaded bead I created for the um, class we did, the celebrity spotlight we did in February mm -hmm. to, to a smaller degree. But yeah, I, I have this uh, tendency to go kind of overboard. Is it overboard? I think it's just enough. I mean, I think that uh, that's all relative. <laughs> I think it's as you said, it's all it's all relative. Um, more is more in my book. <laughs> this is my gizmo pendant. Woo! It's an art. It's kind of an Art Deco spinner beaded bead fidget thing. I've got it on a chain. Um, beaded fidget toys. That's amazing. Yeah. So, the edging. Those are also micros in the edging. The, wow. the looking beads. That is incredible. Yeah, this this took about a week to complete. Well, it would probably take me about a year. So <laughs> that is that is so so epically beautiful. And guys, if you're catching this at the end, Onye is beating these incredible beaded structures. It's all beads. There's no middle core. There's no wooden anything. It is just full on beads creating a 3D geometric structure. It's mind blowing. I just, I just enjoy it. And it's not, it's like everyone else's beating. It's one beat at a time. It's taking an idea and giving it bones and flesh and a heartbeat. It's creation. We are creatives. We create things. You know, I'm not a mom. I don't have children, but I understand the concept of a baby growing in its mother's womb and then coming out and then being nurtured and groomed and poured into and fed. You just keep feeding your ideas. You just keep feeding your creativity and giving it full room to grow. And that's how I achieve these things. That it's nothing that's preconceived and it's, I'm making it up as I go along. I joke with my friends. I never know what I'm doing. I'm just doing what I'm doing. And then something really beautiful seems to always happen. Yeah, that's really amazing. And just such the way of life too, you mm -hmm. know? Like, we don't know what we're doing. I mean, we have an idea, we know what's right and wrong. We have an, a moral innate sense, but in terms of like, what's going to happen next. No one, no one knows yep. the script of our lives, you know, yeah. but we keep going and we do what feels right. Sure. And, and that's very much, that speaks to me about the way that your creativity with these beads, it's just like, it's like living and breathing. To me, it is. To me, your expressions, your creative and artistic expressions carry a piece of who you are in them. They carry some of the markings, some of the fingerprints of God, some of the fingerprints of your family background, your story. They're expressions of your elevated self. So for me, it's just giving it like a dancer, give her room to twirl, to jump, to jete, you know, to take wide leaps. Onye, I was reading in your bio earlier today, I wanted to, to quote you um, about art as your life purpose and the creative ability to inspire others. That's something that really resonates with us here at Jesse James Beads. And you quoted, to bless someone is to empower them to be prosperous, joyful, and peaceful. Those are beautiful words and sentiment. Thank you. It's, it really is my creative intent. It's really what I believe I'm created to do. 
Um, I believe in the 10,000 hour principle that you become a subject matter expert on something that you have put more than 10,000 hours of work into. So my advice, if you wanna call it advice to people is just keep creating, just keep exploring. Let your curiosity and your passion take you someplace you haven't been before. You know, I hate to bring it up, but it's, it's always there. The pandemic took us into a place we have never been before. And we had to reach deep into our souls to reset and to figure out, okay, what am I really doing here? What do I look like when I am not bound up and tied with people pleasing and keeping up appearances and being um, crucified by capitalism? What do I really look like when I'm ex allowed to freely express myself and be uh, all of myself? My wonderful friend Zuri has a t-shirt in her store that she created that says, be all of yourself. This is really a time to be who you really are. And if you're a creative, be that. If you're a teacher, be that. If you're a seamstress, a doctor, an engineer, be that. But find the purpose, find the real reason, not just making money, not just making yourself happy. What do you contribute to your community? If I can inspire someone to reach into their creativity and push the boat out, as they say in the UK, to really pull up all the bells and whistles, then I, then I think I'm doing something. Then I think, okay, that's success. That's not allowing someone to be isolated by, um, you know, first world problems, but to really see themselves as number one, divine. Number two, I have a reason for being here. Something is inside of me that has to come out. What is it and how do I find it? So I'm here to hopefully be that light in someone's life. And if not anyone else, then I'm going to shine the light in my own life and push the boat out and let the good times roll and let the beads roll, but also create something beautiful and meaningful in the process. Sonia, thank you so much. It is always such a gift to be able to spend a, even just a few moments with you. Like I said, when Onya and I met each other at Beat and Button several years ago, you just came into the Jesse James booth and with such a presence and such a gift and such inspiration to share and it was received. And I know whomever is watching now or if you watch this on the replay later, that the Onya's words, they've reached to your soul. And there's items that really resonate within us and you just, you use your words and bring them to life. So thank you for taking a minute to share your light with us on this Friday morning. I appreciate the opportunity a great deal. Thank you again. And Onye, if you are interested in learning more about Onye and hanging with Jesse James Deeds and our fellow campers this summer, we are doing summer camp enrollment right now. There is free shipping for summer camp over this 4th of July weekend. Um, Onye is going to be teaching us amazing geometric beaded art, right angle weave. And I just can't wait to get to hang out with you more, Onye. Thank you for coming and sharing your spirit with the Jesse James Deeds crew. Thank you so much. Have yourself a safe and happy 4th of July weekend. Um, to you and to everyone that's out here, take care of yourselves, be good to one another, be good to yourself. And like Onye said, let that creativity roll, let the beads roll, let the good times roll. I love it. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Bye everyone.